Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Thought Leaders. I'm your host, Chris Chang. And today we've got Tim Davidson, who's VP of Marketing and Founder of B2B Riz. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. I am very, very excited. Very cool, man. Thanks for thanks for taking the time. Um, before we kind of jump into your background, tell us a little bit about B2B Riz. What did you guys do and you know what kind of companies you guys work with? Yeah. Uh, so B2B Riz, um, it's a ABM LinkedIn ads consulting firm. Uh, it's it's just a one person shop. Um, I have virtual assistants and some help, but it's just uh, me for the most part, um, solo company. Uh, I work primarily with B2B SaaS companies, um, just helping them with their ABM and uh, LinkedIn ads. Very cool. Um, good stuff. I would, I would definitely a lot of stuff we want to dive into around that. But before we do, um, you know, you tell us a little bit about your background, right? So you did, uh, you, you ended up in tech. Uh, doing more of the PPC side in the very beginning and then kind of carved out more of like a broader reach on the marketing side. But what was the initial interest? Because I've also seen here you're a professional lacrosse player and then then what happened there? And then how did you end up in this space? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I went to school for uh, for marketing. Uh, I basically just did it because I failed out of uh, zoology. Um, I just couldn't hack the the more science-based things because I was more focused on lacrosse, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so I played lacrosse all my life. And um, so basically just went to the easiest program I could find. I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, but while in college, um, again, I was playing lacrosse, I was playing sports. So I had to figure out how to make men ends meet. And I got into eBay. Uh, so I was just yeah. buying things, selling them. And in one of the courses, I started learning about uh, PPC. So Google ads specifically. And so one of the first things I did was, oh, I have this business running where I'm I'm selling, you know, thrift, some stuff from like thrift stores and, and certain like Pokemon cards and stuff like that. And so I started using uh, Google ads and I learned quickly how much money you can spend very fast and get no return on investment. So it was just uh, at, at that point, I wanted to quit and just be like, oh, I'm never gonna do marketing again. Um, but I kept with it and got a lot better. Um, so like outside of college, I started working at a few agencies um, mostly with Google ads and Facebook ads. Um, and then I eventually got into LinkedIn ads uh, a couple of years down the road, but I just learned a lot about how to, uh, you know, all the, the structural things, right? So, you know, the bidding and, and the settings and all that, but what I really found myself uh, optimizing was the copywriting uh, because I figured I was really good at all the big bid management and all that. And so did a lot of other people. But it was the copy that I found that was going to help, uh, drive the next results outside of that. Um, and so when I got into uh, B2B in tech um, at another agency, uh, that's what I really focused on. Uh, but alongside that was LinkedIn ads. Uh, so one of the things we started seeing early on uh, at the agency I was at before for about four years is uh, LinkedIn ads. And I just spent a lot, a lot of time there because we started seeing a lot of results there. Um, we went from like 30, 30 employees to 160 employees. Oh, wow pretty much based off of LinkedIn ads. Um, and so I had, it got me a lot of experience. And so what it brings me back to today where I went into and focused on that is I saw an opportunity where uh, even at an agency, it was very, very hard to hire uh, people with LinkedIn ads experience. There was a lot of people with Google ads, Meta, Reddit, a lot of experience there, but it was very, very hard to find someone that had uh, LinkedIn ads experience as well. Um, so taking the, the learnings I had from growing the agency with LinkedIn ads primarily and uh, the basically just making it very hard to hire, even hire someone with that experience, I saw an opportunity. Um, and so when I went out on my own about nine months ago now, it worked out very, very well um, because there was the opportunity because I had a kind of different point of view based off of my learnings. Um, and so today now I'm just primarily focused on ABM and LinkedIn ads. Um, but yeah, it was just a long journey trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, cause I didn't know, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't go to school for marketing cause I wanted to, it was just the easiest yeah. thing. Uh, so I'm glad I found something I really like. Yeah. Interesting. Um, super interesting. And so I guess like the question is you went from going consumer, like using PPC for consumer, right? And then you switched yep. up to B2B um, with an emphasis on the LinkedIn side of things. Like why was, I guess I have my own kind of like personal inclinations towards it, but like what was your reasoning behind the switch versus like getting really narrow and focusing, you know, on 
some specific channels like other agencies do for the consumer side? Yeah. So to be honest, it wasn't this like, oh, I'm so fascinated with B2B because even on the consumer side, it was more of like the lead gen aspect. It wasn't like e-commerce. It was more uh, lawyers and HVAC yeah. and, and construction. Um, and some of those clients had B2B uh, yeah. side. So I was doing some LinkedIn ads for it as well. Uh, but to be honest, I didn't go into B2B just because I was fascinated with it. Uh, I found an opportunity where I was going to, it was just a great opportunity to work for a company that was in B2B. Um, and I ended up getting the job uh, because I was advertising to that company um, when I was uh, trying to get hired there because uh, I didn't have the experience, the B2B experience like that. Um, yeah. It only worked out because actually while I was uh, applying for that job, I was running LinkedIn ads on the side to those uh, the, the hiring managers. And so they saw it. It, took a screenshot of like, oh, this is, this is interesting. This guy's creative. And that's what yeah. landed me the job. Got it. Interesting. And so it was like an organic kind of like push into that side. It wasn't like a necessarily a conscientious decision. Yeah, but I fell in love with it. I, I will say like I, I I did fall in love with B2B as I started doing it. Um, and now I'm just like, it just yeah. won't go back right now. Yeah. What do you feel like are the key differences as to like why you have a stronger preference towards it? I think, I think it kind of goes back to, to some of the, uh, so I mentioned the zoology part. I'm I'm very fascinated with psychology. Yep. Um, that obviously, it was in the consumer side of it as well. But uh, B2B is just a completely different game in terms of like the, the sales cycles and just how people buy. And there's I think there's much more to that part than just like the e-commerce. Like, I mean, if you look around my office, the amount of things I buy just because of off of TikTok is ridiculous. But I'm not going to spend 50K on an ACV product yeah. like that. Like, so I think there's a lot of psychology that goes into it, which I find very interesting and fascinating. And yeah. honestly, I also see the opportunity because uh, B2B is typically a little bit behind in terms yeah. like compared to the consumer level. Uh, so I think there's just a lot of opportunity there. Yeah, I agree. thousand um, percent. Very cool. Uh, so talk, let's talk, let's kind of like dive into more on the LinkedIn side of things, right? So you've gotten much more granular and carved out a niche in that space. Like how has you know, you've been in it for a few years now and you know, how, what was the opportunity like back then? How has it evolved in the past couple of years? It's gotten, um, this is more specific to B2B SaaS, but it's gotten yeah. a lot harder because people aren't buying as much as they are Yeah, three, four years ago. Right. It was just the, the, the hate, the, it was just the heyday of like, everyone's just buying and, and hiring and growing. Uh, so it's gotten a lot harder and, Outside of that, people are scrutinizing the budgets more and more. And LinkedIn ads, in my opinion, is one of the hardest things to actually track because, uh, you know, Google ads and paid search, it's intent, right? Someone searches and then they buy. Uh, Meta, if you're doing it for B2B, there's just the algorithm just way, way better. Uh, so they can find people that are in the market at the same at the right time. LinkedIn, you have to use like third parties for that. And those aren't even perfect. Like there's just a lot of it's a lot of like getting in front of the right person at the right time, which is really hard to track because you don't know when they're they're there in the right time. Yeah. Uh, and so it's gotten really hard because there's much more scrutiny on it. And um, there's obviously more people are advertising in it, uh, but also just less people are buying. And so like the costs have gone up. The uh, There's a diversification of features that LinkedIn's given us, which is awesome, but it's become a lot harder to track and it's going to get worse. Um so, you know, to be honest, half my, half my job is, you know, trying to educate on how people buy and, and, and uh, that stakeholder management, which is interesting. Got it. Got it. Um, interesting. Uh, so on the, I mean, on the LinkedIn side of things, like, are you, do you still see, like, is that still, I know outside the education part of like, you know, looking at account-based marketing, but then how does the LinkedIn portion play into that equation as perhaps like a tool for you to do the ABM and has that, yeah, is there any like particular like changes in strategy now? Because yeah, there's, I feel like there's more stakeholders, definitely a CFO is usually now involved in almost every purchase decision. And so messaging is different to all these different types of personas within an organization or within an account. Um, but like, how do you leverage 
LinkedIn for that purpose. Um, and one of the things that I've, you know, we've done in some of these conversations is like how the importance of like relationship mapping prior to like doing a call is, is really critical now. So you try to remove as much friction from the buyer to buy um, by doing as much research as you can if, if beforehand. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so LinkedIn primarily like LinkedIn for the LinkedIn ads part, it's going to be the distribution center, right? Like how, how do you distribute your message in front of the right buyers at the right time? Now, LinkedIn's also given us a lot more tools over the years um, that are great for the ABM side. Uh, they actually just released this new feature where it's called, it's not the best name, but it's called companies. And you can actually see the impressions, organic and paid uh, mm -hmm. engagements, clicks uh, from certain accounts over, you know, certain amount of days, 7, 30, 60 days. And so those types of things are going to be huge just so to understand like, all right, what's the trends of, all right, we're seeing these account kind of trending towards, you know, last seven days, they're clicking on the ads a lot more. They're getting, um, you know, the certain amount of impressions so you can uh, coordinate with sales more in that, in that sense. Um, but also, you know, to your point, mapping out those messages to the right people within the organization is, has been a, a big thing, obviously, in the last couple of years. Um, and just making sure you get in front of each of those people uh, at a good cadence. Because obviously, at the end of the day, no one has unlimited budget. So those tools I mentioned, with like the company level data or um, even like third party tools, that stuff's important just to uh, map it all back. Because if you're not getting in front of each of those stakeholders, it's going to be harder for them to actually come to you and buy. Um, and so if you can map it out, with those tools or beforehand with the me different messages, it's, it's going to be much more impactful. Makes sense. Um, interesting. A couple of questions here specific again to like, kind of like the LinkedIn uh, mm -hmm. ad, but like, um, you know, there was a point in time where like the, the sponsored in mails were doing well um, because they're, you know, they hit the inbox, even though like they're not, um, you're, you're getting at least like a visibility for the messaging. Um, versus like trying to send email, which might go to spam, but you'll be able to send a message to LinkedIn and actually hit the inbox. So it depends on what you're saying there. Uh, is that something that's still useful? That's one question. Um, and then I got a follow-up question around like kind of like a, a CEO, B2B SaaS, like building influence on these platforms specifically for the purpose of driving revenue. Yeah, so to the in-mail and the conversation ads and those types of message ads, um, there's still, it, it's funny because over the last, so I, it, the funny part is uh, early on when I was at the agency before, I mean, that thing drove yeah. so much revenue. Uh, yeah. first, it was very, very crazy. Um, obviously over the years, as most things do, I have new tactics, a lot of, and, and the funny, the other funny part is we're an agency, so we're going to pitch our clients the same tactic. And so it's gotten more saturated over the years. Um, so you're definitely seeing the decline in it. I can look at the data. The open rates are are actually better than I thought they would be. You know, four years later, the 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 click throughs are better than I thought as well. Um, but you are seeing the decline in the conversion rate overall. Yep. Uh, and that that's what's going to happen. So you have to add in the other things to supplement it. There is still a lot of, a big play for it. It still can work. It's just not as effective as it used to be um, by a lot. Uh, just because yeah. LinkedIn's also changed how their inbox and there's like the the other, and sometimes they'll just go to the other um, part of the inbox, which oh. is basically like spam. Um, so LinkedIn has definitely changed from that point of view. Got but it. Still, it still can work, just nowhere near. You need the other things as well before yeah. you could just do that and be gold. Yeah, interesting. Um, and then the second point of the question was kind of just, you know, seeing a lot of these, uh, you know, CEOs come up with content to spur their influence and reach and using that as a way to drive pipeline. Um, I know there's now agencies that are helping these CEOs yeah. do it, but uh, curious to see your, your, your hot take on it. And, you know, do you, when, when you're working with a company, like how important is it for, you know, the CEO to drive, like how, I guess like it doesn't have to be the CEO, but like how, how important is it for like the employees or the senior leaders to like have a presence on LinkedIn as part of like driving awareness for the overall company? In my opinion, it's very, very important um, because so one, I see the data. So I have, and this, and this is coming from like the LinkedIn ads and ABM side, right? Where I'm, I'm trying to drive something from the advertising platform. I have 
I have two different clients, one where they have an, an active CEO or, um, or team, you know, an executive team, like maybe it's a VP or something like that, where they're active on LinkedIn and they're, they're doing what you're saying. Like some of them have an agency or a copywriter behind that because let's be honest, CEOs are very busy. They have to run a yeah. corporation. Uh, if you just let them outside of a few CEOs, if you just make sure, if you just tell them to go do it, they're not going to do it. They can't. Yeah. Um, but if you have a support team behind it, they get a lot of engagement and that stuff really does help with your advertising. Cause you can also boost that. You can put ads yeah. behind those posts that work well, and it just helps overall. On the other side, I can see, again, see the data where they don't do it and the engagement with the ads, the, um, the conversion rates, they're just different. Yeah. That brand value does help with the, when you have like a CEO or an executive team, um, posting and you can see the back end numbers it helps a lot. Mm. Uh, so I think it's very, very important. But, and so when I'm working with clients, I do try to get them to do it. Um, not only because it just drives awareness for the company, drives revenue just from those posts, but also you learn stuff from those posts. So if you, yep. can, if you work with the CEO, you can see which posts, because ideally they're also talking about like, it's not just going to be very like high level stuff. It's going to be some, some deep stuff that's about the business and yep. going to drive like actual, you know, new business. Uh, so you can learn from those posts and get really good insights on messaging on the comments that are, people are asked, uh, what people are asking that you can use for content for your advertising. Yep. Absolutely. Um, interesting. Quick question here, kind of like from going and working you know, as a W2 person to then going and starting your own like consulting business, right? Like um, outside of the core competencies of the service that you're offering and, you know, having to be fluent in those things, um, you know, you're wearing a lot of hats and then you're also trying to like manage cash flow, right? With getting new clients and all that kind of stuff and, and managing the balance of it. Um, what's been some of the things that you've had to shoulder in that responsibility that, either you expected or didn't expect and how is it like met or exceeded expectations? Yeah. Um, so overall in hindsight, I, I wish I did this earlier. Like I'm, I'm really excited about it. Like it worked out very, very well. Uh, which funny enough, it's because of the new business part, because I, <laughs> I am the CEO. I am the one I've created a personal brand. So I'm creating the content and that drives the business. I don't, I don't, I'm not good at sales. I'm not going to reach out to people. It's not my thing. Um, but I drive the business from LinkedIn. Uh, but you no, know, to your question, everything. I mean, sales, having to do, especially early on, uh, having to do sales calls and onboard clients and send out invoices and follow up with invoices that didn't get paid and do, uh, I heard about a couple months in, I heard a uh, virtual assistant and then I heard, so now I have two virtual assistants and a freelancer that helps me out. So like, payroll for all that, like getting those paid, just signing off on things. Those are all things I didn't, I, I knew it was going to be a thing. I just didn't expect, you know, how many ways my brain would have to be going yeah, and how many things would just pop up that I have to like do, um, especially like, like sending contracts and like, oh, I got to figure out an e-signature. Like all those things just pop up that you don't really understand when you start a business. Um, now I have good play things in place, but there's still always things that should, pop up um the other thing that was a uh and i again i knew this was going to happen but you don't really realize what's how how different it is until you're doing it is uh so when i worked at the companies i can go on events take time off and i can <laughs> not have to work right yeah. i can actually go to the events and actually do the thing i can uh go on a, uh, in a vacation and actually relax can't do that right now uh, yeah. I went to a couple, three weeks in a row with the B2B events. I was just working after the event or before it. I, ha I had to, it was just I'm one person, right? Virtual assistants can help and the freelancer can help. But I'm still managing other clients, um, mm -hmm. vacations with the family. Uh, can't, I mean, I mean, I can, but I can't, like, I have to still do work, uh, just to keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, uh, and in terms of that journey, like where do you foresee it going in the next like few years for you? Is this something that you're looking to kind of expand on and 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 continue to grow? Uh, and, or is it like going to be a lifestyle business and making a conscientious decision around that? Because I've seen a lot of you know, this, 
I've been down this road as like a, you know, go from consulting, starting an agency and then like have, you know, 20 employees and, and then go through that whole thing. And then I've seen like others that are just content being a consultant and just being a one person shop. But how do you think about it? Uh, and then there's like the Eric Huberman's of the world. That's like, just goes ham on growing digital agency in all kinds of facets, going to a venture arm and doing SaaS and everything else. But uh, yeah, just kind of curious as to what your personal inclination is. Yeah. So the true answer is I, is I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't want to build a huge agency. I've seen the good and bad sides of those. Um, again, going from 30 to 160 employees, like it doesn't sound fun to me being a CEO yeah. of that. Um, that said, also when I started, I said I would never look for any help. I thought I would just be a lifestyle business and since then, I've hired a couple of virtual assistants that are full time and a freelancer that helps me out. I didn't think I would ever do that. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be a middle ground. I'm not sure if I'll ever like hire more than ten employees. Yeah. Um. But I do. You know, to your point, it is definitely a lifestyle business uh, to an extent. Um. Like I mentioned, the the vacation stuff or going to events. I do want to be able to go to events and and create content and and you know actually go to those events and be part of those and not have to worry about client stuff. So sometimes I do want help on that side. Um, so it's still up in the air. Uh, I do love what I do. I'm doing, um, but I do think I'm trying to get more and more help because I was at capacity like three months in. So it's just like watching the money also fly away is like, Oh, that's, that's not the best. Um, so just figuring out the, the, the middle ground where I'm not managing a bunch of employees, but maybe I have some outside help uh, just helping out there is, is probably what I'm going for. Fair enough. Um, and then just last few questions here as we're rounding up on time is just, um, you know, you, you've, you've been a specialist on LinkedIn. I mean, do you see you continue to get more narrow with that or, you know, just kind of really like being, be owning that domain. Do you look at, other channels that you might be expanding into in the, in the next, you know, six months to a year. Um, what does that kind of look like for you in terms of like, just continue to be able to deliver um, for your, for your clients? Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough one because I, especially in, early on, I wanted to be very niche. I wanted to stick within my lane and I like doing that. I like sticking within one platform. Um, but also, you know, on the other side of it, I have clients that need help on multiple platforms and they'll ask me that. And I do have, I do have a couple of clients where I manage also Google ads. I, I also have a background in that. So like, I can still do that. Um, it's not my, I like, I really do love LinkedIn. Like, so it's not my favorite thing to manage other uh, platforms. Um, but sometimes the client needs that help and it just doesn't make sense to hire two different people or I'll lose the business because an agency does both. There's that too. Um, another side of it, I also understand that LinkedIn ads is not going to be the only thing that drives revenue, the other things matter, right? Whether it's another paid channel, whether it's organic or like what we're talking about with the CEO posting, I'm starting to get more into that part uh, in terms of like, yes, trying to have them do it, but also helping where I can, because I do understand how important it is to the LinkedIn ads um, performance. Uh, so I do think I probably will expand at some point to an extent um, with outside help. Um, but I do, I do really do like my kind of niche, uh, but I do see where there's some opportunity and missed opportunity by not going into other channels. Got it. Um, anything, last question, just kind of anything that you feel like you're foreseeing as, you know, I know you kind of like have been pushed, holding off on doing some of these things unless like the customer's asking for it, but like, um, are you, are you noticing any like themes or trends and like, are you, is there anything you can kind of like be more predictive around that you're expecting that you're going to have to adjust in the next like six months or a year in terms of like specific channels or specific tactics or strategies? I think it's that organic pairing the organic with the paid. I think that is, um, I just, I'm seeing the, the impact it can have on yeah. the, the business and the, just my, my lane of LinkedIn ads as well. So I do think that's something I'm I'm getting more into, whether it's, I don't think I'll ever offer it. I don't, I don't want to go down that route, but partnering with people that do offer it or figuring out a package 
or figuring out um, a quick like guide or, or template that can help them just to make it easy. Um, because I do think I'm, I know I'm seeing the impact on how it can help. So it's like, so from that point of view, it's, I need to figure something out just because I can see the impact. And I think it's LinkedIn, especially right now. I mean, the view, just from my experience and, and from others I'm talking to, the the engagement, the views, the the impressions are 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 just crazy right now. You can get a lot of engagement and a lot of a lot of business results from it. Got it. Very cool. Um, on that note, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time um, and sharing your insights, just sharing your expertise. That was super helpful um, and and super interesting for me personally. But yeah, thank you so much, and and I think our listeners can definitely gain a lot of value from this. Thank you, Chris. No, this was awesome. I really, really appreciate it. Very cool. Thank you.